Okay, so I had a little uh, technical difficulty with the last lecture recording, so I stopped here. Now I was going to talk about the pigments and lab absorption, but I believe we talk about this in the lab. So just to avoid the repeat, I'm going to skip the next uh, next few slides. Um, and I'm going to mention a little bit about the absorption, absorption spectrum, just in case you uh, didn't get a good understanding in the lab. So um, there are different pigments in the leaves that can absorb sunlight and then capture the energy in the, in, in the sunlight. So there are um, a couple of types of main pigments. So we have chlorophyll and then we have um, carotene. So chlorophyll is the main photosynthetic pigment. So you can see in this graph that chlorophyll has the highest absorption in the blue light range right here. And then in the red light range. So that means that these pigments um, utilize these lights the most for photosynthesis okay so they like these two ranges the most like okay smiley face and then you can see that the absorbance for the green light range is very low right this is the valley of those lines so that means those pigments do not like green light okay around this range of wavelengths right here so what the pigments do is that they absorb what they can use for photosynthesis, meaning these two, and then they reflect green light back because they don't use them. And then when the green light is reflected back from the leaves and enters your eyes, um, that's how you perceive uh, the leaves as green or algae as green. Okay, So the pigments really use uh, colors other than green. Uh, for photosynthesis. Okay, so this is uh, about the absorption of light for different uh, photosynthetic pigments. Okay, uh, I'm going to mention this real quick because it has real life applications. So we talk about chlorophyll and they reflect the green lights back. So that's why they appear green. We also have carotenoids. So that's another group of pigments that you, have, you often found in um, plants. Now, these carotenoids um, have a range of colors, so they can be yellow or orange or red. So they are often found in certain fruits and other plants. So the red color in tomato, yellow from corn seeds or orange from orange peel. So all those colors come from the different carotenoids. All right. Now, um, usually leaves have chlorophyll and carotenoids, okay, these colors. But chlorophyll is the most abundant pigment. So that's why those leaves will be green, okay, because chlorophyll kind of masks the other pigments. So their colors just don't show. But when we get to the fall, when the temperature drops, the leaves are going to lose the chlorophyll first, right? Remember the trees, they're going to shed their leaves uh, to kind of reduce the chemical reactions to reduce the metabolism so that they can uh, survive through the winter. So when they lose those leaves, uh, or about to lose those leaves, the, the, the pigments in the leaves, the tissues, will, the cells will start to break down. So chlorophyll will be broken down first. Once chlorophyll is gone, now the other pigments start to show. So you're going to see other colors from uh, pigments like carotenoids, right? That those uh, uh, other pigments. So this is what um, causes the leaf or fall leaf color change, right? So just some interesting facts. Okay, so how does photosynthesis convert light energy into chemical energy? So you have to remember this. Those plants, algae or cyanobacteria, they are converting one form of energy to another form of energy which they can actually use. So they're going to convert light energy into chemical energy. So chemical energy just refers to the energy that stores in chemical bond. Okay, so they're going to be temporarily stored in chemical bond. And then when you break the chemical bonds, you release the energy for other cellular activities. So there are two steps involved in photosynthesis. The first one is called the light reactions. Now, some people call it light dependent reactions. That's fine too, because this step does require sunlight. So that's why we call it light dependent reactions. So the purpose, the goal for step one is to harvest solar energy. So you're going to have those pigments and some other proteins. 
to extract the energy from sunlight. Okay, and then you are going to convert that energy into a form of a chemical energy. Okay, and that's going to be two things: ATP. Uh, you're familiar with ATP. Uh, the second one you might not know, so it's called NADPH. So this is an electron carrier. So they can carry electrons, they can carry energy. All right. So again, for the first step, you harvest uh, solar energy and you can make two kind of intermediate um, electron carriers, energy carriers, and they're ATP and NADPH. All right. Now, these two things are going to be needed in the next step. So the next step is called light independent reactions, which means this process does not require light. So it can happen uh, during daytime or it can happen uh, at night when there's no light because it does not require sunlight. So other name, um, some people also call it Calvin cycle. And then in this cycle, you are going to use ATP and NADPH produced from step one to make uh, carbohydrates, glucose. Okay? Um, and in this process, you also need CO2, carbon dioxide. Okay? So you're going to need energy and the electrons, and then you're going to need carbon dioxide. So provide energy to synthesize glucose, and then to provide electrons so that the carbon is reduced to the carbon in glucose. Remember the reaction that we looked at earlier? Carbon is reduced, right? It's reduced over here. So you need to provide electrons to reduce the carbon because when something is reduced, that means they're gaining electrons. All right, now that's the two general steps. So this is a, more just a repeat uh, of what I just talked about, but the figure, um, uh, there's a nice figure over here, and then there's some more detail. All right, so um, let's look at this um, uh, detailed information here. All right, now this picture tells you a few pieces of information. So the step one light reactions take place in the thylakoid membrane. Okay, so what is that thylakoid membrane? Now, this whole thing right here, this whole thing, this is a one chloroplast. Remember that cell, the that's the cell organelle that um, photosynthesize photosynthesizes. So this is a chloroplast. All right. Now inside these chloroplasts, there are these stacked disc structures. This green thing that's called the thylakoids. All right. Now the the thylakoids are membrane bound structures. So so this is going to be the membrane, all right? So the light reactions take place in the, the membrane of the thylakoids. Okay, now um, in the chloroplast, besides the thylakoids, you also have the, the rest of the space. Okay, so you have a fluid filling the rest of the space. So this space is called a stroma, stroma, all right? So basically chloroplast, in chloroplast, you have inside, you have a thylakoid and then you have a stroma. Okay, so the first step happens in thylakoids. So again, you have to make ATP and NADPH. And then uh, in that process, water is split. And then when water is split, oxygen is produced. Okay, remember we talked about over here. Um, again, delete that and change that to six. So oxygen over here in water becomes oxygen gas. So it loses uh, hydrogen. Okay, so it's oxidized, right? So um, it loses electrons, loses electrons. So that's what happens here. Uh, water is split and then oxygen is produced as a byproduct, okay? Um, and then the second step uh, we talk about, it's not dependent on light, so it can happen anytime. And this second step takes place in the stroma. So it takes place outside the thylakoids, okay, in the rest of the space in the chloroplast. Um, and make sure you don't mix stroma with stoma. So stoma uh, is the openings uh, on the underside of the leaf that can take in carbon dioxide, and the stroma is this space inside the chloroplast. All right, uh, the light-dependent reactions use ATP and the NADPH uh, and the carbon dioxide to make carbohydrates. So that's more like a repeat from the last slide. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about the details of how the chloroplast, the cell organelle, can harvest the solar energy and make glucose. 
um, we have to talk about the uh, light reactions machinery first. So the machinery, machinery is called the photo systems, photo systems. And sometimes um, we just really, um, you know, never mind. We don't have any uh, good uh, abbreviation for that. So just the whole name, photo system. We have two photo systems, so we have two and we have one. So it doesn't mean that the reaction goes from one first and then to two. It doesn't really mean that. The one and two are based on the order of um, when they were when they were discovered. Okay, so photo system one is dis was discovered first, so we named it one, and then two was discovered later. Okay. So a photosystem consists of two things, uh, light harvesting complex and reaction center. So you don't have to memorize that, okay? Um, and in the harvest, light harvesting complex, that's where you find the pigments, okay? So basically remember in the photosystem, you have a pigment and then you have a reaction center, all right? So the pigments um, can pass light energy to two special chlorophyll molecules. So there you go. So the two um, main pigments that are used in photosynthesis are chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, okay? So uh, over here, we focused on chlorophyll A. So chlorophyll A receives sun, the sunlight, the solar energy, and then the um, electrons in the chlorophyll A, so these electrons, as you can see, this is uh, the electrons right here. So when the light hits the chlorophyll A, the electrons of chlorophyll A get really excited because they receive all the energy from sunlight, right? Uh, when you have sunlight um, kind of shining on you, you can feel the heat, right? You can you can kind of feel the energy in the sunlight. So when the chlorophyll gets the energy, the electrons as part of the atoms, they get really excited. And then they are going to uh, move on to the primary re electron receptor, okay? So they will be passed on to other uh, membrane enzymes. So they will be passed on. Okay, um, and then eventually um, they will be um, used to generate the things that we need for uh, step two. But over here, so these electrons are passed on, right? So they left the chlorophyll molecules, but you need to replace those electrons so that you can have more electrons get excited and be passed on in the reaction pathway. So what we do is we're gonna split water to hydrogen and oxygen ga gas. And remember in that process, oxygen is oxidized. That means oxygen loses electrons. So the electrons lost from oxygen will be coming here to replace, to replace the electrons that you lost from the excitation from sunlight, okay? All right, um, here is a, a, actually a better picture, okay? Um, all right, so like, let's go through the text real quick and then I can point out the different components in the structure or in this figure. Now, this can be very complex, so just bear with me. I know it's a little bit um, boring, um, but we have to go through this. Okay, so we talk about the pigments absorb energy from sunlight and um, the photosynthesis is initiated, okay? So don't worry about the uh, these terms and the antenna pigments, don't worry about that. Just remember that when the pigments receive the, the energy, the energy excites the electrons, all right? Um, okay, so the electrons are going to pass through the electron transport chain, which will eventually pumps, um, hydrogen, to move hydrogen across um, the thylakoid membrane, all right? Here, let's look at the picture. So um, here, let's see, um, over here, the electrons are excited, and then the electrons will be passed through this protein complex, all right? And then the protein complex will move the hydrogen against concentration gradient, okay? So do you see the, the arrow right here? 
So hydrogen ions are moved from, if you remember, this is the stroma. And then this is the thylakoid, right? So inside the thylakoid, we call that space lumen. So this is thylakoid lumen. So based on the arrow, you, know, you can uh, tell that the hydrogen ions are moved from stroma to the thylakoid lumen, right? And then you can also tell that you have a lot of hydrogen ions in the thylakoid lumen on this side of the thylakoid membrane, but you don't have too many hydrogens on this side. So the transport of hydrogen ion is actually against concentration gradient, against concentration gradient. So that means you need energy, right, to, to move the hydrogen ions. So this is a type of active transport. So the uh, energy comes from these excited electrons. So they will pro provide energy for these, uh, this, this protein complex to move or to pump hydrogen ions from low concentration to high concentration, all right, to build a hydrogen concentration gradient. All right, now this action builds up a very high concentration of hydrogen ions. Um, and then on the nearby area of the thylakoid membrane over here, you're going to have the secondary active transport, secondary active transport. Now, I don't know if you guys remember so secondary tra uh, active transport does not require direct energy input, right? Because it actually uses the energy you invested in here, the primary active transport, okay? So what happens is these hydrogen ions, you have high concentration on this side and low concentration on this side. And then there is a protein that allows the hydrogen ion to pass through. So now everything is good. The hydrogen ion is going to diff diffuse, it's going to move from high to low following the concentration gradient. So the hydrogen ion is going to flow through this protein, which is called ATP synthase. So you can probably take a guess. Uh, ASE, that means it's probably an enzyme, and it synthesizes ATP. Okay, so as the hydrogen ion flows through this protein, it kind of powers this enzyme. So it's more like a water pushing a motor kind of um, oh, kind of way to get it to work. So you have ions flowing through, this powers this motor, which is the ATP synthase. So the ATP synthase, this motor is going to synthesize ATP from ADP and an organic phosphate ion. Sorry, not a, a organic phosphate group, not an ion. Okay, so now basically you store the energy from sunlight to ATP, which is the battery, right? I talked about before. So you can use the energy stored in the battery for some other uses, all right? So this is pretty much the light reactions. Now, I don't really need you to memorize everything. So on the test, I will give you a picture very similar to this. So it's gonna include all the information that you need to explain the process. So you have to know that this is chlorophyll, that's the pigment. And then when the sunlight strikes the pigment, it excites the electrons from the pigment. So these electrons carry the solar energy and they will be passed through a protein complex. And then the energy will be harvested by the protein complex to uh, pump hydrogen ion against concentration from the stroma into the thylakoid lumen, all right? Now, the purpose is so that you can establish a concentration gradient for hydrogen ion. Because on the other side of the thylakoid over here, you are going to use that concentration gradient to power an enzyme, a motor enzyme that will synthesize ATP. Okay, so this is how you can convert the light energy into chemical energy stored as ATP. All right, so this is part of the light dependent reactions. Um, there is... Uh, Another part that I don't have a picture, uh, I just have a quick description. So this is a photosynthesis too. So I'm gonna say PS2. 
So this is a good abbreviation. I think some people do use PS to uh, kind of indicate this is photosystem. Okay, so photosystem two will produce ATP. How about photosynthesis one? All right, photosynthesis one will also absorb um, a photon from the light. So just remember also harvest light energy. Um, and then what happens is it's going to make the other electron carrier. So that's the NADPH. Okay, so ATP has energy and the NADPH is more like an electron carrier, electron carrier. So it's going to temporarily carry the electrons and then eventually they're gonna pass these electrons to the carbon to reduce the carbon from inorganic carbon to the carbon in glucose, organic carbon, okay. All right, so let's see. Um, there's a quick video um, you can do, uh, you can watch that video and then uh, do, ooh, I don't have the handout for you. So uh, let me get the handout. Hmm, I'll send you, I will probably send you guys an electronic copy because I don't have any money left in my printing account because they're, they're having some issues. So I'll try to remember to give you guys the handout. Okay, just post it on Blackboard. Okay, now we talk about pho the, the photosynthesis step one, which is the light dependent reactions. Uh, and then this is the second one, the light independent reaction. So light independent, also known as Kelvin cycle. So where is this taking place? If you remember, it takes place in the stroma, right? Uh, not inside the thylakoid, but outside the thylakoid, is still inside the chloroplast. And where do ATP and ADPH come from? So this process, this cycle requires ATP and NADPH. So these two things are produced in the previous step, right? The, the light dependent reactions. Okay, now again, this is how we make glucose from carbohydrates. Okay? So again, this is a, uh, more like a cyclic reactions because you can see things start from here, right? And then, it, you know, goes through the cycle and then you can come back and start making more glucose. So again, there are a lot of uh, intermediate products involved. So I don't need you guys to memorize those things. I, I don't even uh, memorize all those chemicals. So I just need you to um, be able to use the information in this graph and then talk about the process if I ask you. Okay, so again, you need to know how to read the graph. So the process starts with carbon dioxide, right? Remember you are putting in carbon dioxide as the reactant. Okay, so um, you are going to um, have an enzyme and then you are going to have another chemical. Uh, you know, what, let's use this picture. This is a little bit better and then I have questions so that we can fill out the questions. Okay, so here's the enzyme that I was talking about that will catalyze the first reaction. Okay? And then we're gonna have a, another chemical molecule. So I put all the, the full names over here. So this com chemical is the ribulose biphosphate. So ribulose with OSE, you know, OSE, you know it's a sugar, right? So it's actually a five carbon sugar. So if you count one, two, three, four, five, five carbon sugar. And bi means two. So this five carbon sugar has two phosphate groups attached to it, okay? So again, you don't have to memorize the name. Uh, I probably will just give you this, uh, this abbreviation. Just know what it does. So basically it will uh, accept the carbon dioxide. Um, and then when they bind, you are going to use an enzyme, rubiscal, to catalyze this chemical reaction. Okay, so to, to kind of make them linked. And then uh, they're gonna form a six carbon molecule, but um, that six carbon molecule is not very stable. So it's gonna immediately break down into this three carbon chemical called a PGA. So PGA is the three phosph uh, phosphoglycerate, glycerate. So this is a PGA. So you can see it has a one, two, three, so three carbon. All right, now this first step is called carbon fixation which means you are converting carbon from the inorganic carbon in carbon dioxide to organic carbon, right? We talk about the differences between inorganic and organic chemicals. So 
now you have carbon carbon bond so now it's organic carbon organic molecule organ, uh, molecule with a carbon okay now um, the next step you're going to try to reduce pga right so you are going to give the carbon electrons and the hydrogens so in this process it requires energy so you're going to put in atp to provide energy um, oh that's for the first step so you need energy uh, and then the step, second step, you need to reduce PGA. So in order to do that, you have to provide electrons. And the electrons are provided by NADPH. Okay? So after it donates the electrons and the hydrogen, it becomes NADP+, plus, right? because it loses electrons, so now it carries a negative, or positive charge. Okay? So that's the second step, reduction of PGA. And it's going to continue to go. Uh, it will be converted to PGAL, to PGAL or uh, G3P, that's the full name. And then this PGAL eventually is going to uh, kind of split. So you have one molecule coming down here, which will become glucose. And I'll explain why there's the half over there. And then the five, the majority of it, five molecules uh, of PGAL will go back into this cycle. And then it's going to be used to regenerate this uh, ribulose biphosphate so that you can use that in the next cycle to fix more carbon. Okay, so that's the general process. Now let's talk about why here it's a half. So uh, if you remember the reaction of photosynthesis, so you have six carbon dioxide and water, six water, and you get one molecule of glucose. Uh, oops, this is six. And then oxygen, right? So you can see in order to make one glucose, you need six carbon dioxide molecules. And that's because there are six carbon atoms in glucose. So each carbon dioxide only has one carbon, right? So you need a six carbon dioxide in total. So if you put in three molecules of carbon dioxide, you are gonna get half of molecule half molecule of glucose, right? So that means in order to make one molecule of glucose, you are gonna have to double this amount. So you're gonna put in six carbon dioxide, all right? So that's the math. So let's answer the questions. Calvin cycle requires CO2, that's the reactant, but you also need the molecule that provides energy, which is ATP, right? And then you also need the molecule that acts as uh, an electron carrier, which is over here, so NADPH. So these things, uh, not carbon dioxide, but ATP and NADPH are produced in the previous step called the light. Is it dependent or independent? Independent, right? The first step relies on light because you're capturing the solar energy. Okay, number two, in carbon fixation, which enzyme catalyzes this reaction? So this is a carbon fixation, and you can see uh, this is the enzyme that will catalyze the first step, which is to combine um, the carbon dioxide and then the ribulose biphosphate. Okay, so the enzyme is, oops. Okay, give me one second to plug in my, my computer. Okay, let's continue. In carbon fixation, the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction is rubisco. Carbon dioxide reacts with which molecule to form a six carbon molecule, but it's not showing the picture. But this six carbon molecule will immediately broken down to three carbon molecules. So it describes this step right here. So the carbon will react with the ribulose biphosphate, so RUBP. And then the three carbon molecule is actually over here. Oops. And you can see one, two, three, right? Three carbon, so that's PGA. So again, you don't have to memorize the names for each chemical because everything else is on this picture. So you can just give me the abbreviations. In stage two, the reduction PGA is reduced to what? Um, or sorry, reduced to what by what? So this is PGA, um, PGA over here. So you can see it reduced to um, another three carbon molecule called the PGAL. So it's reduced to PGAL and who provides the electrons? So that's gonna be the NADPH. 
One molecule of a pigol or a three, uh, G3P is used to make glucose. So the majority is used to regenerate. So one molecule is used to make glucose and then five out of the six will go back to the cycle and regenerate that bi-ribulose ribulose biphosphate, right? So you have the raw material to do the next cycle. So this is going to be ribulose biphosphate. How many carbon dioxide molecules in total are required to make one glucose molecule? So we'll talk about that. You need a six. All right. So uh, this is an a overview picture on the process of photosynthesis. So again, this picture has two processes, two steps. Uh, step one, light independent, or sorry, light dependent reaction. And then second is light independent Calvin cycle. So in the light dependent reactions, what you're trying to make are uh, two things the molecule that will provide energy for Calvin cycle and then you also need to make the electron carriers that will reduce carbon in the Calvin cycle all right um, and then when you start the Calvin cycle uh, the carbon dioxide just from comes from the air okay? that's it that's all the three things you need to make a glucose and then that's a, a a cycle right so you start from here and you make sugar and then some of the um, raw materials will go back okay? and then you, you can do this cycle as many times as you can. All right, so that's the photosynthesis process.